Hi, I'm Chris. And I'm Angela, and we're coming to you from the greater Chicagoland area. Hi, I'm Luke. And I'm Dee. And we're from Cleveland, Ohio. Join us as we taste a variety of fun wines on Friday nights. Join us this week for part two of the Savignon Blancs. We will be looking at our food pairings with the Ferrari Carano and the Nobilo. Well, something interesting I read about Sauvignon Blancs in general that uh, characteristically, when the grapes are picked earlier, you will get the more um, lime. There's like a there's a like the citrus, the lime versus uh, and a more of a ripened flavor would be. Uh, white peach. I'm interested to know how peach tastes. Does that bring it out? I like it better with peaches. Mm. I, be, I want to try it. I made this um, goat cheese apple crostini and it has lemon um, zest and thyme. I'm going to lift that up. So we did the same and I forgot the lemon. <laughs> I forgot the lemon zest. So, um, I didn't have limes. That's why I, I, we have limes in our water because I zested a lime. And a little different. I mean, after reading about Sauvignon Blancs with the lime, I thought, well, I can't go wrong. So, let's give it a try. Um, I think we put a lot more thought into our food in the past two times. Um, and I was really excited to try this crostini. So, I think you did a really nice job. There's so many, so many flavors in the crostini that my mind's kind of spinning on that. And I think it complements the wine very well. You know what um, really changed with me was the um, cheese really brought out some of the, um, more of the acidity and citrusy uh, flavors in the wine. So I think I think this was a really good, um, really good pairing that made mm -hmm. made this more enjoyable for me. It's um, asparagus with uh, prosciutto wrapped and uh, baked in the oven. Nice. That looks delicious. It was. Uh, Can we try one? <laughs> mm -hmm. Here. Thank you. Mm. So good. So just a moment ago, I tried uh, a kiwi, and um, I'm sad to say it's not a. Even though I love kiwis, it's not a good pairing for this wine. Mm. I didn't. I didn't care for the flavors. And I said maybe when we move on to the New Zealand wine. Here you go. That'll work. We'll try again. So, so far, I liked the um, apple crostini. The, uh, the fig crostini was good. We tried uh, some you know, some shrimp. That was um, very tasty. Yeah, well. with the spicy cocktail sauce. That yeah. worked. Um, another uh, couple, we've got three more food pairings. Sorry. So, we've got the caprese with the standard uh, tomato, basil, and fresh mozzarella with the balsamic glaze a citrus caprese salad with a honey balsamic glaze. I didn't have white balsamic vinegar. I used white wine vinegar with, but I had blood orange olive oil from a special like olive oil shop. I happen to have it. Mix that together with honey and a pinch of salt. And I drizzled that over little citrus capreses with orange, basil, and like a little mandarin, little uh, cutie orange on the end. Nice. I wasn't a fan of the asparagus and the uh, the prosciutto. You was? You weren't? With the wine. Yeah. But I With think the wine. this being so zesty and so so lemony, I think like a like you were saying a spicy uh, a spicy dish. But I was thinking like a fatty fish, like a, right. like, a like a tuna or maybe a, I don't know. I don't leave a lot of fish, but because it's got so much bite and mm -hmm. I don't know what the acid is but it's it's I think it could handle a, a more fatty fish because of the acidity and the fact that it could stand up to spice and acidity I made some bruschetta just with uh, chopped some fresh tomato basil garlic and some salt pepper and olive oil over um, a untoasted French bread little crostini um, like tomato garlic basil olive oil does well with this. I think my takeaway from both uh, these food pairings with the basil is the, and the citrus um, is the basil. Basil like the herb. How was that time? 
with that. You know, you I'm, not a big, I'm not a big time fan, but it was fresh. So it really throws your taste buds off. It works, the combination works, but it's really different. So I think it complemented the wine because it throws your taste buds off so much. So I think but without the time, it would have been still a very good compliment, but it, it's, it's kind of send me for a tizzy. Well, our research showed that um, you know any of the uh, green herbs, mm-hmm. you know dill, um, in, in our case basil, parsley, uh, pairs well with Sauvignon Blanc. Cilantro. I would I, if that would be, would be an interesting test. I would try, like to try to some like some salsa, right? And see how, how well this works. I bet you it would work pretty well. Probably. So we tried. Um, the wine with a uh, Gouda cheese on an herb cracker. It was okay. Um, I think I might have had too much Gouda cheese on. It, it it made the cheese seem a little creamier, the wine did, but I don't know that it, for me, bring out more, but it didn't right. either. It was just kind was of- Was yours smoked? Smoked Gouda or, or not? Regular Gouda. Okay, ours is smoked and that smokiness it's a little overpowering, I think. It doesn't really. It's not really a, a good complement to the wine. Cheese tastes good. Yeah. But it doesn't add any. It doesn't do anything for the wine. Yeah. I have. These are what Kalamata olives and some baked green Spanish olives. For me, I didn't think they did anything with this particular wine. I don't know how. Do you have any? I have not tried it yet. What do you think? The olives were good. I don't think they complement the wine. Right. We also tried the mango salsa. How's that? A recipe of mango salsa. <laughs> I didn't think it complement. So it was great on the fish tacos we had yesterday. Oh, good. But I didn't think it complemented the wine. However, she likes it. I liked it. I, th- I liked the combination. I made sure I did get a good uh, portion of cilantro. There you go. When I had it um, mm. on my scoop. Here. So I'm going to try another uh, kiwi. See if this works any better. I tell you so far, Lou, I have to wine eat. Works with kiwi. Does it? I'll try to. Yeah, it's better. The kiwi has like a almost grassy. This is not super sweet. It is not. They're not ripe. But the um, but the flavors of the grapefruit uh, work pretty well with the, with the kiwi. It's better. It's better than the better. It's better than the Ferrari. Right. With the Costini, which has the green apple on it, um, I notice it brings more of the citrus out. So the goat cheese, green apple, lemon, thyme mm-hmm. blend brings out more of the citrus notes versus the melon. Uh, with the first wine, I think the goat cheese helped it because it was already zesty. It was already lemony. And you knew what you got. It cut the lemon. Uh, with this one, it brings out more of the lemon, and I'm missing those other flavors that I was smelling initially. So the melon and the grapefruit. Now I'm, I don't think I'm getting this lemon. So I would, I would say this amplifies the lemon. If you like lemon, try the goat cheese and, and apple. But I'm not. I don't like what it's doing to the wine. Right. I agree. I like this appetizer for sure. Mm-hmm. But I think I liked it better with the Ferrari Chrono. Did you try it with your the goat cheese with fig jam? I like that combination because it's the sweet and the salty. Yeah. Um, now, Dean, I tried it. I tried it with both the mango salsa uh-huh. and with our, uh, our our bean cucumber salsa, which also has jalapeno, uh-huh. so it's got a bit of spice. Uh huh. The mango salsa, I didn't really care for, pairing, but the bean cucumber salad. I thought brought out a lot of the um, the melon that I was missing when I was tasting the other stuff, and it also brought out a little bit of apple. Um, so I was I really like I like the pairing with the salad. The, the other uh, Sauvignon Blanc, I did not like the bean salad at all. Mm. I like the crust- crostini. So it's interesting how the, the two different wines, same grape, different atmosphere, different winemaker. Um, it's totally different with with foods. So, the uh, the crostini with the fig sauce and the um, goat cheese, I really enjoyed it with both of them. 
Mm-hmm. So that, that's one you can you know go either way with um, with these two wines. So now I'm going to try the uh, Caprizzi salad with the um, oranges, and um, we'll see how that goes. I like the, um, the citrus caprese. Citrus caprese with this wine better. So everything that Angie was reading me about Sauvignon Blancs, um, it kept relating back to apple, apple dishes to pair with. Um, so we tried to do that a little bit, but what we also thought about doing was taking the different apples, and we have four different kinds of apples, and we, we cut four different apples up, and we're trying them with the different wines as well. The first wine, I, I didn't notice a whole lot of the different flavors being up, brought out by the different apples. We have a Granny Smith, Golden Delicious, and two reds. A Pink Lady and a Fuji. So fairly, fairly different types of grapes. All right, apples. <laughs> apples. <laughs> um. <coughs> Because there's, there's, there's sweet, there's sweet tart, and there's tart and sour. So with the different apples, Chris, what do you think? I'm working my way through them. <laughs> we have Granny Smith here. We have Granny Smith and Honey Crisp, but I uh, soak them all in lemon juice, so I think it's all sour. <laughs> well, it, 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 it helped. It helped because when I tried both of these with the um, Ferrari, uh-huh. I, I liked them both. And they both, both paired well with the, um, with the wine. And that's probably, you know, probably due to the lemon juice. To be honest, the, the Granny Smith is bringing something really terrible out. <laughs> no, I, I don't like it either. So Fuji, didn't like it. Granny Smith, uh, Granny Smith didn't like it. Um, Golden Delicious, it's okay. But it's, it's interesting, I don't, I, the other one, I thought, okay, the apples are fine. Here, I don't like the apples with it so much. Uh-huh. But what I did like about the different apples. Ooh. Sorry. I do not like it with Granny Smith. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Or no, no, with you know, the Golden Delicious. I'm oh, sorry, no. I said Granny Smith. Excuse right. me. The other green one. I liked it best with the. I'm. I interrupted. I apologize. That's I liked it best with the Pink Lady Apple, which is a sweet but tart apple. The, the, the sweeter, in, in, you know, in the apple, the more uh, earthy. Mm. Grassy um, flavors come out of the, the, wine. Of, the of this wine. <laughs> they aren't bad, but you know they, you know, they do uh, taste good. But uh, it's interesting how the different flavors come out. I definitely like how if I'm going to have an apple with the, these wines, I prefer it in something else. The apple it helps add to it with all these flavors, but apple by itself, I think, is too much. And likewise, the bruschette, like the tomato basil, which I thought was like, wow, fabulous with the fry crano with this, with this more citrusy, um, I mean, it's not citrusy, it's just a different citrus fruit, like more grapefruity wine. It just didn't do anything. I don't know, it didn't pow, it wasn't like pizzazzing like, like it did. And I just tried this shrimp with the, um, Spicy, yeah, how's the spicy? Sauce. Sauce? No, it isn't. Very well. Huh? Did you try the asparagus prosciutto with this one? I'm curious to know what the earthy asparagus tasted like. I didn't like it with the first wine. The second wine, I thought it brought more of the grapefruit and uh, melon out than the, everything else. So. Uh, the bean and the uh, asparagus. I'm still not a fan of the asparagus, but again, it's it's supposed to be served right out of the oven. Um, I did bring out the flavors I, I enjoy most with this wine. If you look at how how wines were prepared 100 or 200 years ago, where the, where you had the servants preparing everything and they they're pairing the wine, they're pairing this or pairing that. Like I could see myself sitting in the kitchen, sipping this wine, tasting everything that I, I'm trying to put together a dinner menu. Be like, oh no, not that. Oh, oh, no, not that. Oh, you know, if you find the right stuff uh, with either of these wines, it's going to go really well. But if you find the wrong thing, you're definitely going to miss the boat on the New Zealand wine. We have a table full of food cake pairings that I want to say like three fourths did not go well with the New Zealand wine. Right. Yeah. Even though it's a tasty wine. No, I, you know, it, it was harder yeah. to pair. So I, so I, so I think the softer, um, more balanced uh, Ferrari wine paired be- better with some of these foods. Yeah. And if you're drinking the, um, you know, Dembillo wine on its own, I think it's, a, it's perfect for... I mean, you know, it's just, good flavor. You know, I, just, it's on its own. Yeah. As we're, do- yeah. As we're doing right now, just, you know, right. on your patio, uh-huh. or by the pool, or by the beach, grab it and drink it. Ready fun wine. Right. 
Stefan Wise. Till next time. Till next time.